So these are computer guided sewing machines and we're gonna use them to create a product that will be cheaper for us to make it than buying it from China. Now with shipping prices fluctuating all the time, I am more incentivized to make it myself. Now we're gonna try to make this bottle opener under a dollar. Can we do it? Let's try. These machines are used for many different reasons, from wallets to keychains to even some holster or camera bag straps. If you can figure out a way to make these templates and you can program this machine, the uses for these machines are endless. So this machine kind of works like an embroidery machine. The needle will stay in one spot, but the clamp will move in the pre-programmed fashion. Now what I have set right now is for my dog collars. I sell dog collars on Etsy. And this is the machine I use to make the box stitching of the dog collar. The product that we're gonna make is this bottle opener. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to sew leather around this bottle opener metal piece. We need to create a template in order for that to be possible. Now there are several different ways these machines work. One method is where it'll actually clamp the material down, holding it together and move the material in the sewing pattern. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a template in which we can put our pattern inside. We might even hold it with our finger. If we reduce the speed, it's pretty much like we're sewing, but we're letting the computer do the pre-programmed movement. Now we can reach out to the company and say, hey, I need a new template and this is what I'm doing. And you can communicate back and forth on exactly what you want. But because we have a CO2 laser machine, we can make it ourselves. Now, the first part of creating this template is making this portion right here. This is what latches the template and allows the machine to move it. So we wanna make sure that there's no play here and that it fits just right. Now I gotta sharpen my pencil for this next part because I'm gonna trace the attachment of the clamp and I wanna make sure that it's exactly the way it is going to be when I cut it. And so after I draw it, I drop it into Illustrator, creating the outline. And this is the vectors that we're gonna use to cut out the wood piece. And we're gonna cut them out a small pieces at a time just to make sure that it fits. All right, so we got this figured out. It's literally identical. It in fact fits really tight in there and that's exactly what we want. Now, are we gonna use wood for this template? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe we'll use acrylic because wood does tend to wear off, especially if you're pulling and pushing. Now, before we build out the rest of this, it's a pretty simple shape where we don't need to really think too much about it. We got to make the template or, or the pattern for these bottle openers. So we're going to have to cut it out and see what the pattern is. Cut it on the laser machine. Again, we want everything to be done by computers, not using scissors or, or, or you know, scroll saws to, to cut out wood. We want things to be done by computer because that way you can replicate it again and again. And again, if we're going to try to make things cheaper than China, we really got to focus on automation. Let's keep working at it. So right now we're going to make this pattern and we're gonna see which pattern works best for us. And based on that pattern, we're gonna then create the rest of this template. So I started off with good old scissors, just playing around with making the pattern. I just kind of placed it in and out and just trimmed it accordingly. I wanna make sure that it's a nice tight fit and I left a little bit extra on the sides and then I made sure to trace it on the inside to give me a little bit more detail on what I need to cut into the fold because I do want to make sure that it's all one piece and not two pieces. And then of course the same thing, I traced it and dropped it into Illustrator to create the vector, cut it, and then after that we have our final piece. All right, so we have our leather piece. It's cut out perfectly on the first try. This is great, so even if you open it up, you can see that it's perfectly, you know, it has the perfect amount of distance all the way around. That's the nice thing about using machines. All right, now it's time for the final step. We were gonna make the actual template. I wanna make sure I trace the opening that was going to be in the template. I cut it out on the laser machine just the same way and then assembled it by applying super glue to put the two pieces together. Now, even though the template is ready, but we're not just ready to sew. Right now, we're gonna program the stitch pattern that we're gonna use for this bottle opener. So what I did is I taped the bottle opener in the way that I wanted it to be sewn. I dropped the needle, because that's going to be our guide that will guide us along the path of sewing. We're gonna keep that needle tight to the bottle opener the whole time as I'm programming 2.5 millimeters at a time. It did take a while, but we got it done. All right, I think we're ready to try to do our first sewing. I don't know how it's gonna turn out. I probably should have done this template with wood the first time. I'm kind of starting to think that there might be some things I might need to change, but you know what? We're here, might as well just try it.
Now, I love the way it's sewn. I think the, the, the sewing is awesome. Don't have to change it, but I'm definitely going to work on the width. I think these are too wide on the sides, and I think we can shave off that. Now, the most important is, does this fit our bottle opener? So let's try that. All right. Snug and tight. That works. Like I said, look at that. Well, I'm going to have to definitely work on the template and recut it. Everything else is going to stay the same. All right, I made the template. The punishment for me brushing too soon is it's going to have to be pink or blush. So I uh, took the files, applied it here, changed the things, changed the template. And so hopefully if it's a little bit, uh, it looks a little bit better as far as the outline, the outside of the leather. All right, did we beat China? Well, the amount of money that it costs for this metal piece is 40 cents. The amount of leather we used is about 20 cents, and then the labor cost is about 15 cents. So the total for us to make this one is 75 cents. Now, with China, these are 60 cents a piece. So did we beat China? Well, not necessarily, not directly to math. And to be honest, we haven't even calculated the shipping, whether it's cheaper to ship with the leather or without the leather. So there's a lot of gray areas. So why did I decide to build this whole process? Why not just buy it from China? Now, the main reason, and I use this strategy for a lot of my products, is that it can make different color types. When you're buying from China, you, you're buying bulk. You, you can't buy small amounts. In this case, I can buy a lot of metal pieces and just buy a lot of different types of leather and whatever sells, I can make it. And because I have the template in my computer, I can play around with smaller sizes. I can make a bigger one, I can make a smaller one. I'm not committing to a specific kind of inventory, but I'm able to play the market and see what is selling and then only manufacture that. And then once that becomes stable enough, then I can order from China if necessary. Now I'm gonna be posting these on my new Etsy shops. So I'm excited to see how they're gonna sell. Now if you wanna follow me on how well they did, well, you can check out the link in the description. I actually start you off on the journey by showing you how I opened up this Etsy shop. And you guys can follow me on my journey of opening up an Etsy shop that can average $500 in sales per day. That's my goal. That's what I'm gonna to try to reach at. And I'm gonna be posting these on that Etsy shop to get one step closer to my goal. Now I also posted these three products on this new Etsy Shop. And in this video, I share with you the process and the first week of sales on these products. So don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, have a good one.